Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone Welcome to the second live session of this massive open online course on sociological perspectives and modernity uh, in the first live session we had a few questions I'm sure uh, uh, most of you will have some questions for the other but <clears throat> uh, right now I don't see any question uh, uh, if if you have some questions then we'll, we'll address them uh, if you if you look at this course sociological perspectives on modernity you will find that uh, this course is a journey through through social theory of the past 100 years or so um, and the way we started with marx and weber and wind up with Giddens, habermas and and then uh, uh, modernity in indian contexts or 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 but modernity in non-modern contexts such as India and in between the two I mean uh, Marx and Weber on the one hand and 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 uh, uh, Gideon Sabermas uh, on the other or modernity in non-modern contexts on the other that you will find that that uh, uh, we, we tend to visit uh, we get to visit uh, uh, structuralists and post-structuralists, Western Marxists, uh, uh, scholars drawn from cultural studies, feminism, uh, postmodernism, um, and other interesting things. As you might have guessed, uh, as you might have guessed that that uh, we don't spend very much, so much of time uh, in any one of these. This is mainly because we are more interested in the ideas. Uh, than, than in the names. This is not an exercise in learning of information about great theorists, rather it is an exercise in thinking sociologically. Uh, if you slightly recall, we have discussed uh, in this uh, course, uh, there are four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity, namely holism or totality, uh, reflexivity, rationality, and social movements. If uh, holism or totality refers to the idea that that society is a unit in some sense and it can be studied as a single entity. Reflexivity refers to the idea that we cannot simply observe society from the outside because we are also involved in it. Rationality I mean, which is based on reason, reasoning capacity, refers to the idea that we can understand society in ways which we can explain it, explain to other people. And social movements refers to the idea that that, that creative human action both sets the social world and in turn is also set by the social. What, what I have done in this course that I have tried to explain uh, why these ideas matter. I mean, these four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity, I mean, critical modernist paradigm in sociology, critical modernism. Okay. Why these ideas matter and how to get Perhaps, Perhaps one of the starting points to get there is through C. Wright Mills the sociological imagination. Okay. Uh, uh, Mills, C. Wright Mills, uh, used this, used the sociological imagination to mean the ability to understand the, uh, the larger historical scene in terms of its uh, meaning for the inner life. Uh, and the external career of a variety of individuals. It enables 
uh, it's easier to take into account how individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions. Okay, that's why that's why we have given you the example from Marx and so on. I mean, suppose you, what are what are when I said falsely conscious of their social positions, class is also a social position. Classes, according to Marx, are manifestations of economic differences. If you if you look at this, that that classes, according to Marx, are manifestations of economic differentiation. Classes are constituted not on the basis of the income that one earns, but on the on the basis of the position that one occupies in the process of production. For example, if there are two blacksmiths, one an owner and the other a paid worker, then both belong to two different classes, not one. Okay, that's why we become falsely conscious of our social positions in our, in our daily experiences. That if our income increases, perhaps our our class position also tends to change. No, it is the position that one occupies in the process of production that determines our social position, our class position. And within that welter uh, of, of their daily experiences, the framework of modern, modern society is sought. And within that framework, the psychologies of a variety of individuals a variety of women and men are formulated and the sociological imagination enables us to grasp the, the grasp history and biography uh, and, the, and the relationship between the two within society and then then what we have done we have we have discussed the nature of sociological theory uh, I mean explicit theorizing uh, about the nature of the social world uh, uh, how uh, sociological theory uh, consists of perspectives on the nature of the social world, I mean, laws of society and so on. Okay. Uh, sociological theory uh, not only uh, deals with, with the study of nature, but also deals with, and more so deals with the nature of human acts. Then we have discussed sociology and everyday thinking, uh, I mean, how paradigms uh, shift in terms of Hoonian reflections on the nature, on the structure of scientific revolutions. And, and uh, then, then we have uh, discussed uh, uh, how we, we, have, we have tried to look at uh, uh, the modernist paradigm in sociology through the works of uh, 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 Marx and Weber, okay. Um, I mean, classic statements of sociological modernity. Mm. Uh, we have discussed Marx and modernity. Uh, I mean, the context of these those those four uh, uh, central philosophical and political foundations of critical modernist paradigm in sociology, namely holism or totality, reflexivity rationality and social movements and and then we have we have also discussed how Weber tried to interpret modernity in terms of rationality and uh, rationality social movements uh, reflexivity and so on but precisely because we have argued that 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 uh, Weber was not a holist uh, precisely because of, of, of the way he tried to uh, uh, propound for methodological individualism. Uh, his, his, uh, he took a methodological individualist position because, because Weber's theoretical uh, positions and methodological writings uh, are, are a reconciliation between positivist and neo-Kantian positions. Okay. Uh, then we have we have discussed the structuralist case. I mean the structuralist interpretation of modernity. That is ultra modernist perspective uh, in in the ultra modernist uh, uh, i mean structuralist perspective we have discussed uh, the works of, of levi strauss and and louis althusser uh, i mean relationalism and, and the death of the subject uh, difference uh, 
functionalism, uh, uh, I mean modernity, social movements, ideology and function, um, uh, political background, uh, the meaning of science, uh, and Levi Strauss' uncertainty principle. And then we have moved on to uh, uh, Western Marxist perspectives on modernity, society as a human creation, uh, the view from Western Marxism. We have tried to uh, define Western Marxism uh, of notwithstanding its limitations. Uh, we have, we have uh, dwelt upon the works of, of Georg Lukacs, Antonio Gramsci and Alain Turin. Uh, we have discussed in the Western Marxist perspective on modernity. Uh, we have discussed uh, uh, Western Marxism and structuralism, uh, reification and I mean Lukacs reflections on, on reification. I mean for, for Western uh, Marxist authors, society is a human creation. More exactly, humanity is, a, is, a, is social humanity. Human beings make their own history, but not as isolated individuals. Human beings only appear as human beings in interaction with one another. That is so in social relations. These social relations, however, are not fixed or given so that we could discuss these, these in terms of structures which define which uh, which define what appear to be individuals, rather they are the results of collective creation and social conflict. Uh, and then we have we have discussed how how uh, whatever appears as natural given or fixed uh, in society is the result of human action but we do not recognize it as such and then Lukacs, Georg Lukacs introduces the term uh, reification to describe the, the pro this, this process where the result of our actions appears to us as a quasi-natural thing, semi-natural thing uh, uh, because we do not recognize its social origins or the process of creation that goes into its formation. And this concept of reification links into some of Marx's discussion of what is translated into English as alienation. But it does not give economic production, interaction with uh, external nature, the same central role it has in much of Marxist writing. And in Western Marxism, uh, then what appears as structures as simply are simply the products of human action or even more simply a form of human action which has taken on a life of its own and now appears which is quasi natural and and then we have discussed uh, within western marxist tradition expressive totality consciousness and action i mean human agency class agency um, and class conflict uh, class consciousness class organization hegemony knowledge and action i mean institutionalization of class conflicts institutionalization of class struggles uh, within reflexivity and rationality we have discussed self creation self knowledge and modernity and i mean we have tried to historicize critical uh, uh, modernist paradigms in sociology through the western marxist uh, lens i mean historicity and then we have we have discussed absolute historicity okay uh, then we have we have discussed uh, uh, modernity and social theory in through the works of Immanuel Wallerstein, Anthony Giddens, and Jürgen Habermas. Uh, then we have tried to try to sketch the deconstruction of modernity. I mean the feminist challenge. Uh, 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 towards cultural studies. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, Within cultural studies, we have we have discussed uh, E.P. Thompson, Williams, Raymond Williams, um, uh, and Michel Foucault. Okay, um, and and then we have discussed uh, the postmodernist challenge. So far as uh, uh, European modernity is concerned, uh, then we have discussed postmodernism as ontology, uh, as epistemology, and so on. And then we have we have discussed feminism and postmodernism as a test case. Uh, uh, then we have discussed a new totality, I mean empirical responses to postmodernists in terms of totality in the social movements, uh, rationality, uh, reflexivity, and so forth. Okay.
and then we have discussed radicalized modernity in, in through the works of uh, Anthony Giddens, uh, 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 then Jürgen Habermas, uh, and so on. Okay, uh, and then we have we have we have tried to look at modernity in, in non-modern contexts. Uh, maybe uh, in the context of Africa, in the context of Latin America, and in the context of Asia. Okay, uh, because whatever whatever modernity that we tend to look at today, it is basically Eurocentric in nature. Uh, uh, it is uh, it has big, it has taken a, taken an ethnocentric uh, route, uh, and if you if you look at uh, uh, modernity in non-modern contexts. Uh, uh, India is a classic example, and we have we have discussed uh, modernity in non I mean modernity in Indian context uh, through the works of Gandhi, through the works of Dipankar Gupta, through the works of Amartya Sen, and so on. And then we have tried to try to uh, uh, we have tried to look at uh, uh, again the problematic of modernity through those four central philosophical and political foundations of critical modernist paradigm in sociology, namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality, and social movements. Okay. Uh, and there we have we have tried to take stock of whatever we have discussed. Uh, I mean uh, the problematics of modernity, modernity as a as, as a paradigm and modernity and feminism uh, uh, or critical modernity as a as a, as a paradigm. And and uh, and so, okay. We have we have tried to try to cover uh, the central elements of, of uh, uh, modernity, but by by looking at by reflecting on on sociological perspectives on modernity, we have tried to not confirm to modernity, not in conformity to modernity, but rather. Rather, we try to deviate from modernity. We try to interrogate modernity. Uh, modernity uh, as a pro as a project of European Enlightenment. That's what we try to interrogate. Okay. Uh, uh, knowledge comes not through conformity to norms, but uh, well, knowledge uh, comes only when we tend to deviate from the norms. Okay. If is there any question? Is there any question? Okay. Please don't think that this is the last live session. There will be another live session. I mean, the third live session in in December 2020. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, uh, pose those questions. Our team will respond to you. I mean, they will get back to me, and then we'll respond to you collectively. Uh, in the live session, also you can pose these questions. Uh, uh, I'm sure you will. You will. Uh, um, learn how to make arguments in, in social uh, and political theory as such through this course on sociological perspectives and modernity. Uh, uh, this is this course is not simply about modernity but also social and political theory. Okay, uh, if you have any uh, question, please raise them uh, in the third live session also. Uh, which will be held in December 2020. Uh, you can also uh, post those questions on the portal, uh, and the exam examination will be held in December. Uh, if you have any query, if you have any doubt, if you have any reflection on this course, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, thank you. Which question?